I'm joined now by the Trump campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. It's my pleasure, Jake. So let's start, obviously, with tomorrow's big debate. Uh, take a look at what Donald Trump tweeted yesterday. Quote, if dopey Mark Cuban of failed benefactor fame wants to sit in the front row, perhaps I will put Jennifer Flowers right alongside of him. Afterwards, Jennifer Flowers, who infamously had an affair with uh, then Governor Bill Clinton, sent a text message to the New York Times saying, quote, yes, I will be there. Can you confirm if Jennifer Flowers is going to be at the debate as a guest of Mr. Trump? No, I cannot confirm that, and I can't believe how easily baited the Clinton campaign was. Basically, Mr. Trump was saying, look, if Mark Cuban's going to send out these texts that say the humbling at Hofstra and this is his big downfall, then uh, Mr. Trump was putting them on notice that we could certainly invite guests that may get into the head of Hillary Clinton. Uh, but we have not invited her formally, and we don't expect her to be there as a guest of the Trump campaign. I, I did think it was really odd just one day after Hillary Clinton was rebuffed by a Democratic mayor of Charlotte to please not come to Charlotte, not divert resources and not come at this time, then they exercised poor judgment the very next day by putting out a statement by the Clinton campaign uh, about Jennifer Flowers and what, what this meant with Donald Trump, that he shows he's easily provoked. No, the easily provoked people here were the Clinton campaign. So it's well, very poor judgment. But look, we're going to talk about the issues that face America. That's what the debate is. I can understand why Hillary Clinton wants a billionaire in the front row. That's just another Monday night for her. But we're going to talk. We're taking the case directly to the American people tomorrow night. Just as a point of fact, I think both Trump and Clinton were talking about visiting Charlotte, and the mayor said that they didn't have the resources for either one to visit. But I think it's curious, and probably a lot of viewers are wondering, you think that what's odd is the Clinton campaign's reaction to Donald Trump tweeting about somebody that her husband had an affair with decades ago, not the fact that Donald Trump tweeted something about someone that the nominee's husband had an affair with decades ago. It, it seems odd. It seems odd that they would give it life and breath since you just said three times in a row that Governor Clinton had an affair with her. Uh, I didn't say it, but now a lot of American who did, Americans but who Donald didn't know Trump who Jennifer Flowers life, was. Did he not? Donald Trump gave it life. No, he, He's the one that he brought basically it up. Well, and they could have left it at that. What he said was, if she's going to do this as a way to bait him, then perhaps, perhaps, if it was in his tweet, perhaps he'll invite Jennifer Flowers there and or have her sit in the front row. But, you know, I, I also just want to say, Jake, that this the particular presidential, this year's particular presidential debates are incredibly important so that we can hear the visions of these two candidates. Donald Trump is out on the stump every single day. He was in Roanoke last night. He was in four or five swing states just this week giving policy addresses, talking about issues. Hillary Clinton is running negative ads against him. You know what should be fact-checked? Hillary Clinton's campaign two weeks ago saying she was going to become more uplifting and optimistic and aspirational. Where was that? Where has that gone? It's negative ad after negative ad. It's, it's negative pieces of mail, phone calls, get out the vote programs. We're just not going to do that. We're taking our case directly to the American people tomorrow in this debate and, may I add, every single day out in the stump. But Kellyanne, it's hard, to, it's hard to argue that Donald Trump hasn't been negative about Hillary Clinton. I, I want to ask you, in fact, is he planning on bringing up Bill Clinton's marital infidelity during the debate itself? This is something he has discussed uh, on Fox News Channel and, uh, and in other places. And he's some, it's something that he's talked about in speeches. Mr. Trump will answer the questions as they are asked by Lester Holt, the moderator, and he has a right to defend himself against anything that uh, Mrs. Clinton, Secretary Clinton, may say in response. There, there's, no, there's no plan to do that. I'm not going to reveal what we've been doing uh, in our debate conversations, but the fact is that he has every right to defend himself. You know, he, he is always, he's always constantly attacked, and then the moment he counterpunches, and then people are just shocked. That, that he would do that, he would try to defend himself. Um, but he will answer the questions asked. We certainly hope that the questions go to policy, answer the questions that the American people have. They deserve and expect these candidates to be talking about the issues. You know, ABC Washington Post came out with a poll overnight, Jake, that shows the issues that motivate Americans. They want these candidates to talk about the economy, terrorism, health care, immigration, national security. Uh, and so, Mr. Trump is ready to have that conversation. You say he only counterpunches, and I know that that's kind of like the mythology of the Trump campaign, but the truth is he attacks people on their own all the time without being provoked. Heidi Cruz, Ted Cruz's 
wife is a perfect example. Rafael Cruz, Ted Cruz's father, is a perfect example. Uh, Ted Cruz just endorsed Donald Trump, a big moment for your campaign. Uh, I know you used to support <coughs> Ted Cruz. Has Donald Trump apologized to Senator Cruz for attacking his wife and suggesting bizarrely that his father had something to do with Lee Harvey Oswald? I won't reveal their private conversations, but I will tell you we're thrilled to have the endorsement of Senator Cruz. And we know that uh, Senator Cruz and Donald Trump combined in the primaries got the lion's share of the votes. Between them, they won uh, an, almost all of the states, uh, with, with very few exceptions, as you know. I think John Kasich won one. I think Marco Rubio won one, not his home state. And, and so together, they really do represent a large part of the party. But I'm, I'm very happy that Senator Cruz kept his promise and adhered to principle. He signed a pledge that they all signed saying that he would support the Republican nominee. And I, I also appreciated the fact that when Senator Cruz endorsed Mr. Trump on Friday, Jake, he did not just do it in a statement. He just he didn't just say, I'm going to vote for him. It was a very lengthy, very thoughtful uh, presentation of the six reasons or so why Donald Trump is much more, much preferable to Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton, the Supreme Court, national security, in yeah. cybersecurity. You know, he went on and on with that, and I think that's incredibly important. Donald Trump recently, according to all the polls, has been able to pull in the Romney voters. He has 9 in 10 Romney voters. Hillary Clinton has 8 in 10 Obama voters, according to the new ABC Washington Post poll. And Donald Trump has also been able to get 90% uh, or so of Republicans yeah. to support him. I think Senator Cruz's endorsement will help with a few points here and there as well. And it shows great party unity. So, Kellyanne, let me, let me turn to the influence of Russia on this election, questions surrounding one of your uh, advisors. On March 21st, Trump spokeswoman Hope Hicks confirmed to CNN that Carter Page was a foreign policy advisor to Donald Trump. And that same day, Trump him, himself identified Carter Page as a member of the Trump campaign foreign, foreign policy team during a meeting with The Washington Post. Both these stories still on your campaign website. We now learned from Yahoo News that Mr. Page has opened up private communications with senior Russian officials about lifting economic sanctions. Has your campaign spoken with Mr. Page about this? Well, I've, I have not spoken with him at all, In fact, meaning he's not part of our national security or foreign policy briefings that we do now at all, certainly not since I've become campaign manager. Uh, and so it was Is he not part of the here, campaign he's doing, anymore? He's not part of the campaign no, he's anymore? Not. He's certainly not part of the campaign that, that I'm running, meaning we don't have him. We have a number of people, uh, fabulous people, men and women, as part of our national security and foreign policy team. And, and he's, he's not among them at Trump Tower. Uh, and I also will say, if he's doing that, he's certainly not doing it with the permission or the knowledge of the campaign, the activities that you described. So if he's out there talking to Russian officials, he's not doing so on behalf of the Trump campaign in any way, shape, or form? He is certainly not authorized to do that. All right, Kellyanne Conway, thank you so much, and good luck at the debate tomorrow night. We'll all be thank watching. You, Jake.